Hello, my name is Ian Felice, and welcome to the Blues Kitchen. Ian Felice has just released his beautiful new record, In the Kingdom of Dreams. The middle child of three, Ian is perhaps best known for being part of the Felice Brothers. We caught up with Ian whilst on tour in Europe to discuss the new album, growing up in the Catskills and becoming a parent. And, as is customary, Ian performs a spellbinding version of Fred Neal's I've Got a Secret. And while you're watching, subscribe to the channel for regular episodes of The Blues Kitchen Presents. Ian, welcome to The Blues Kitchen. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. How are you doing? Great. You were, I think you were just saying before, we kind of what, two and a half weeks into this run? Yeah, about, yeah, it's about, we're almost done. And I assume you've been touring the record from last year more than just this, this run in the UK. I, I haven't done that much, actually. Just I mean, last year, we, we did like, um, same, like, did like two weeks last year, and then okay. I did a few shows in the States, and now just doing this. So has it been that classic thing of you know, making your record and then coming out on the road and the song's kind of still growing and kind of getting to know them a second time? Definitely. I had to relearn them. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I forgot how to play them because I've, I've just been <laughs> working on other songs and music, new stuff. So it was just kind of in the back of my mind. But it was nice to, yeah, just to have some perspective on them now. It's nice. Yeah. Nice. And as part of the Felice Brothers, I mean, you made, what, 10 or 11 records? Something, Something like that. Something crazy like that? I, I don't know. And the uh, lineups changed yeah. over the years. But yeah, when you yeah. put together the band to record this album, you were pulling back on some of the original lineup members. So was that like a safety thing? or uh, I mean, what was, What's your reason for that? Or perhaps the opposite. It's like get some fire back in the room, maybe. Yeah, it was, I don't know. It just, it just happened like that. I mean, my brother Simon wanted to make the record with me. So I was excited about that. We haven't made music together for a while. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I got to get James to play on it because he's the best. And yeah, yeah. Uh, my friend Josh. So it was basically the band. So. Kind of back to being family again. Isn't yeah. It, anyway? And what's it like? I mean, you have to excuse my ignorance, but I don't know who produced um, a lot of the Felice Brothers stuff. But bringing in your brother to produce your record, is that something you're happy just to hand over and let him get on with? Or uh, is, is there tension around that? No, it was very... Very lousy affair. It was very. Oh, that's cool. Very so you're not like Dave and Ray Davies no, and Loggerheads we, we or were, anything. No, we were just, we just, it was literally took three days, and we just had fun, and you know, in the barn, he has a barn studio, and we just made the record really quickly. So it was oh, cool. Fantastic. Was that upstate New York? Yeah, in the Catskills. I understand as well that in the build-up to making the record, you found out you're going to be a father for the first time. There's one thing that's going to change your perspective on the world and perhaps your songwriting. That's a bombshell that definitely certainly going to change your, your outlook. So how did that affect your writing and, and maybe the recording? It made me way more tired. <laughs> <laughs> so harder to get writing done. No, um, <laughs> uh, hard to find time to write. But no, I don't know how it's. I can't really tell yet. Maybe one day when I look back. But as a person, maybe I'm getting more conscious of you know the world, like. <laughs> Being more scared of the future of the world, you know, right. for the generations to come. So. so I'd like to rewind a little bit, if that's okay, because I know you, you guys grew up in the Catskills. Mm -hmm. And we can't really hide from the fact that so many of the greats over the years have either been from or kind of run up to the Catskills, you know, the band being the famous one and Dylan up near Woodstock. And How much did living there shape the sound that you were making? It was very impactful anywhere that you live, you know, everything. Yeah. The way that you can perceive the world or <laughs> the way that you, the kind of music you like to listen to or something. So, yeah, I loved folk music since I was a kid because yeah. my mom listened to it and just resonated with me. Um, so I started listening to blues and folk music when I was really young. And there was a lot of cool old musicians around, actually. <clears throat> like John Harold had one of the first bluegrass uh, bands on the northeast. Oh, okay. Greenbrier Boys, and he was from, uh, I think he was from Brooklyn, Queens. From Brooklyn, but moved out upstate to, yeah, to, to run the bluegrass band. Yeah, if you yeah, like. yeah. There's just a lot of legacy about music and really good music. Do you think perhaps we over romanticize that, the whole idea of? 
let's go up to the Catskills, let's get upstate and no. lock us up. No. We can romanticise that as much as we like. No, it's very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very beautiful place, you know. So then maybe let's talk about the cover you're going to do for us as well. And you picked up this Fred Neal tune, I Got a Secret. And I have to say, I know very little about Fred Neal other than the tune that came up, um, Everybody's Talking in Midnight, Cowboy. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could tell us how you discovered Fred Neal, what his music means to you, and maybe more specifically this, this tune as well. I've loved Fred Neal for a long time. He only has a couple records. He made a really beautiful record in the 60s called Many Sides of Fred Neal. Yeah. He was a big figure in like the Greenwich Village folk, folky kind of scene. Oh, okay. That you were like early 60s kind yeah. of time? Yeah. He played like in those, all those old clubs down there just, you know, as a local guy. And then he made this beautiful record and then I think he moved to Florida and then he hasn't, he only made a few recordings, but he wrote that song, Everyone's Talking At Me, that he talked about, the Harry Nelson cover. Mm. And he wrote a bunch of other beautiful songs like Dolphins. But this song, I think it's a, I think it's an old folk song, actually. Oh, so it's an old traditional that I think he's yeah, given a little bit a of a rework yeah. and a treatment. Is there anything maybe you've learned from his recordings? I know it's only a couple of albums, but that maybe you didn't learn from other folk recordings or... Yeah, his recordings aren't very folky. I mean, the ones that I like are kind of... It's electric guitar and drums and it's kind of, it's a little psychedelic. But, it, you know, the songs are just beautiful. And his voice is baritone. Really, really good voice. So I can't sing nearly as... <laughs> not nearly as good as him, but... Well, I think we're just about to find out if yeah. that's okay. You'd be kind enough to introduce your performance. This is a song by Fred Neal called... I've got a secret, in parentheses, didn't we shake sugary? I got a secret I shouldn't tell I'm gonna go to heaven in a split pea shell Lord aid me, didn't we shake sugary Everything I had is down in pawn Upon my watch, upon my chain, I'd upon myself, but I felt ashamed. Lord, in me, didn't we shake sugary? Everything I had. Down in Palm. I got a song to sing, not very long. I'm gonna sing it right if it takes me all night long. Lord, aid me, didn't we shake sugary? Everything I had. Down in Palm. I got a secret I shouldn't tell. I'm gonna go to heaven in a split pea shell. Lord, aid me, didn't we? Shake sugary. 
everything I had down in pond. Subscribe to the Blues Kitchen for live performances and interviews with the hottest blues, soul, country and roots musicians in the world today.